I'm CK. Tonight we've got a kit from Jameco. I buy lots of components and other kits from other manufacturers like WADA and Velamin and others from Jameco. But this is one of their designed kits. It's a power supply. Kind of hefty, must have a big transformer in it. So let's see what's in it, put it together, and see how robust it is. And I hope you enjoy the video. So let's see what's in this. It's a rather plain box. Jameco Kit Pro Kit Adjustable Power Supply 5. Dot. I think they ran out of numbers. Let's see what we got. We got an AC power cord. Ooh, some beefy caps. 220 microfarad. A couple of trimmers. A couple of MOSFET. High capacity switching transistors. Some diodes, an LED, a couple of resistors. A thingy. I don't know what that thingy is, but we'll figure it out. Some rubber feet. Then here we have a transformer from Ampson with a happy person on the box. Uh, it's supposed to be marked as to what the primary and secondary taps are, but it's not. That's unfortunate. Power transformers have both single and dual voltage input and center tapped outputs. Ideal, perfect choice for power supply design. And again, it just doesn't have the taps marked, which is kind of funny. I'm going to open the box up just to see if we've got a data sheet in here that does have the taps marked. And no, we don't. There's no stenciling on this or anything. Well, that's unfortunate. Looks like we've got in and then out plus a center tap. What else is in? Hopefully this will tend. Why is this why is this this tweezer there? Tweezer should not be there yet. Here's a circuit board, gosh. That is that's an old circuit board. Big huge traces. Dual power supply. Uh Plus or minus 1.2 volts DC to plus or minus 15 volts DC. But those are big old traces. I think this kit has been around for quite a while. There's nothing on this side, so it hasn't been stenciled. It just has the solder mask on the back. Oh, copyright 2000. So this has been around in their warehouse a while. Cut power supply indent. Labels from instruction sheet, glue or tape the board are shown. See figure X. Hmm. Okay, here's a schematic. So we're not going to use the center tap. Here's input, output, and then positive supply and negative supply, the ground and the various whatevers. Here's a adjustment right here and here for the two circuits. An LED for, I guess, power, just indicating power on. And those big old smoothing caps. And here is one picture for heat sinks. Oh, that's what these are. These are heat sinks. Okay, that makes sense. A couple of heat sinks, a couple of diodes, Mounting holes, and another picture, that's the solder side, this is the non-solder side, and we've got an actual picture of how you set up the components, oh and there's going to be 
some lugs that you're going to attach to in that hardware bag. So it's pretty basic and beefy, but that's okay. It does the job. And nothing on the back page. So let's take a little bigger look, a closer look at this bag, because these, there are going to be some, these larger uh, flathead screws, I believe, are for the lugs where you're going to attach your connections to uh, the power. Because we do have a final picture right here, and that will help us also uh, determine how to set up things like the uh, heat sinks, which are going to be on the back side of the MOSFET. Okay, I think we have an idea of what we're doing here. So we'll get the soldering iron heated up and start putting this piece together. I took everything out of their bag. One thing I am going to do before I go any further is I'm going to ground these caps out just to be sure. Because they've been sitting around who knows how long if this was design was created in 2000. Uh, and I'm going to be using thicker solder. I'm not using my 0.31 tonight. I'm going to be using my uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.04 something, because uh, this is heavy duty stuff. Now one thing I do want to say before we get started is we will be working with mains voltage here. It can kill you if you are uncomfortable with that. Uh, don't try it. Skip this one or uh, put it to, aside for later in your career. Just if you're working with mains voltage, it is absolutely at your own risk. I don't want to seem like I'm waffling ab about things, but it is. It's at your own risk. You must know what you're doing when you're working with mains. And I'm going to tear this picture page out of the book or out of the pamphlet so I can do everything right and have it as a handy reference since this isn't printed. Uh, start the board assembly by printing a printed circuit board down on like so. We'll do that. AC input, AC input, transformer input there. Output a transformer here and here. Fortunately the uh, board is pretty translucent so I can see the traces underneath. And we're going to start, what did I say? Uh, diode, put the diodes in, CR1 through CR4. And they are the 50, 58s, are they? I'll find out in a second. Actually, let me look at the parts list. Uh, what do I call them? CR1 through 4. They're 4,000 ones. Now, interesting, they say to mount the diodes an eighth of an inch or two or three millimeters above the board because apparently they expect them to be dissipating a lot of heat. So we will want to not push them flat against the board. We want to have uh, an air gap underneath it. I'll use this toothpick to wedge them up. And let's see where they go. There's one right there. This is a little funny to figure out because you kind of have to hold it up and look at the material behind it to figure it out. Oops, that's backwards. That'll be right. Because the silver band will go where the broad line is on the drawing. 
So I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to solder, since these need some space underneath them, for heat dissipation. I'm going to put them on first and, s no, they're, they're staying up pretty well. That's a, that's probably, I hope you can see that, that's probably a good eighth inch. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it, eight, I'm taking it as eighth inch minimum. Uh, huh. Golly. I got a problem already. If you look here on the circuit board, I mean on the drawing, there's a little arc here. You can see the arc here. There's a little round pad area here, round pad area here, and it's supposed to connect to that and then jump over to here because that's the output. This is the output of the transformer. So that jumps over to here, but there's no hole there. And it wasn't drilled, the hole wasn't drilled through for it. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to drill a hole in that. And that's going to be in my drill press at the other end of the shop. So I'll be back in a little bit. So now we've got a hole in there. Uh, I didn't show you drilling the hole in there because I didn't want to drag my camera over uh, and reset up for just one shot, but I used a uh, 0 0.041 drill bit, and that's just a perfect size. Let me make sure I'm putting the, the it in right. I'll write to James Co. in a couple of minutes and let them know that. Uh, let's see, two more diodes. I'm double checking my. Oops, that's. Did I get that one in backwards? I did. I did. That would have been bad. But that all looks good. Let me trim those leads. And again, just because the paranoia makes you happy in electronics and software and things like that. And all the diodes appear to be going in the correct direction. And next, we're going to put the resistors on R1 through R1, R2, R, and R5. So that is probably 1 and 2. That's a, so the two 180 ohms. And it says quarter watt, but these are half watt. That's R2 and R5. And I know I'm having to flip back and forth between pages. Uh, there's R5. And now we'll put the two big caps on, I think. C3 and C4, C3 and C4, oh no, they're the little ones, they're the tantalum caps, these guys, and these are actually polarized, there are very small plus signs that you can see on them, but look carefully, so this is going to go It's that one. Of course, my paper just fell on the floor because I usually don't work with paper. I usually work with electronic stuff. So 
So that's the one cap. I'm double checking my polarity. And then I'm going to do the other cap. Now they want us to put the transformer on. I'm going to put it here. And the center tap's going to go here to this unconnected uh, connected pa, uh, pad because we will not be using that. So let's get the transformer from wherever it disappeared to. We're going to be doing it this way. And I'm going to put the screws on it only to hold it in place. I'm not going to tighten them yet. Now, the question is, am I going to trim these leads? I'm not going to trim these leads. I don't feel like it. It'll just be all crazy. Now we're going to take this lead of the input, and that will go in this hole right here. Give that a little bend to keep it in there. This one will go, and again, since it's AC current, it doesn't, there's no polarity. You don't have to worry about which side you're going to. So I'll put those there, and I'm going to bend the lead around this way and this way and give it some good old, good old coat of solder. I'm zooming in a little bit. Sorry, I should have been zoomed in a little bit before, but that's okay. At least on iPad, now you can zoom in on videos on the fly. Try that sometime, it's kind of neat. Just pinch or expand in when you're playing a video in YouTube on your iPad. Now, this is the heat sink. I'm going to put it on the board first. And this will not, uh, you're not going to solder this, it just clips in, theoretically. And I'm doing this for a specific reason, because I, I always put the, and the heat sinks really determine the height of how the power transistor is going to work, the regulator is going to work. Okay, that's on there just fine. I'll leave it standing up like that. We'll take our little MOSFET and draw one leg forward. And make sure it fits in those three holes. And we gotta spread it out quite a bit too. Intrusions on the side. It's coming through. Yep, it's coming through just fine. Now I've got a little thermal paste which I'm going to put underneath this just to ensure that I get. Man, I, I glob too much on there. Uh, these power transistors are going to get hot. So we want to make sure. We can help it dissipate all this heat. The heat sink helps, but having some thermal paste underneath it is even better. Now we're going to take another screw, 
put it through there. Just making sure we've got enough screws. Yeah, we do. Now you notice I haven't soldered the transistor yet because I want to make sure everything fits together mechanically before I solder. And I've got plenty of lead on this side and it's flat to the heat sink on this side so I can screw that down. Get it nice and tight. And wipe off that excess thermal paste that I made a mess with. And now I can solder that transistor. Voltage regulator, power transistor, it really kind of depends on when you learned electronics or who taught you because they've been called a lot of things over the years. So that's one. I'll do the same for the other one. That is my this time I'm going to put the thermal paste on the heat sink on the back of the MOSFET before I do anything else. I should have done that before, but my mouth was going faster than my brain was. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention. This is the 337T. This is the 337... Uh, they're both T's. No, 337T and 317T. And the 317 is the positive side and goes here. And the 337 is the negative side and goes there. Double check it, looking this way, and I've got a 337T, 337T, and on this side I should have a 317T, and I've got a 317T. So our positive and negative voltage regulators are in place. And what are we going to do next? Actually, I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I gotta go feed the cats. Uh, so I'll be back in a little bit. Now, while I was off camera, I did something else you might notice. You probably don't, because why would you? Uh, I drilled four holes in the circuit board in places where there are no traces. Well, there's a trace there, but it's not used. Uh, there and uh, there and there because as I was thinking about this as I said this is all this is mains current uh, coming into this thing and we don't want to contact any of that so I'm gonna put a not just rely on the rubber feet but I'm gonna put a piece of wood on the bottom I was gonna put a piece of Lexan but uh, this is so old a design that I figured wood is appropriate. Could have made it out of stone. Okay, now we're going to do the capacitors. And where did they go? 
Where did the big caps go? Oh, the big caps go... Where, where are they? C1 and C2. Oh, they go over here. They go across here, and as you notice, one hole is really big. Uh, that's for the negative side. So we're going to put the positive side through the small hole, the negative side through the big hole. These are also something you want to be mindful of. It won't kill you, but a 220, I mean 2,200 microfarad capacitor will give you quite a jolt if you touch it when it's charged. So always be careful around capacitors. Even though I recall I taught in the Air Force for five years back in the 70s and one of the modules in the course was about electronics and there was some capacitor testing and reasonably good size capacitors but all the students, the young airmen, would charge them up and call out to their buddy and say, hey buddy, and toss them the cap and it'd discharge in their fingers. Everybody thought that was funny. Now the LED goes here. The positive side goes facing me at this particular point. Put that on. And now we'll put the two capacitor, I mean the two dinguses. Now as you see, this is offset. So we gotta straighten the pins out so they go in there. It's a little annoying, but how am I gonna do and that's gonna So we got to kind of bend these pins so they're all in line with each other. You can use, as you can see, I'm using my needle nose to make sure they're par parallel. They could update the circuit board for this, but I don't think they're going to upgrade a 24-year-old circuit board design. And I wrote to them uh, about the undrilled hole, and they're going to go back through and check all their stock to make sure everything is drilled. So if you buy one of these... Okay, we've got a jumper wire we want to put in, which will go... Jumper wire goes here, which means this is a live connection, so I'm going to break that. Uh, do we do it on both sides? It doesn't say to do it on both sides. Which actually, oh, the power cord goes in there. So we're going to jump this, we're going to jump these. And they say to use a component lead, uh, but that's mains. It's not transformed down in voltage, so I'm going to get some real wire and put it through there. And they also say you can put a switch in there if you want to have power supply switched. If I were going to use this a lot, I might do that, but I don't think I'm going to be using this a lot. Now since I didn't notice that that uh, 
was impinging on the trace, I'm going to drill a hole right over there. Back in a little bit. Consistently. Okay, we've got the we've got the jumper in. Now we're going to take the power cord. They say strip it. It's already stripped, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm sorry, the two drawings are conflicting with each other. So this drawing shows this drawing shows AC input, AC input, transformer input, transformer input, uh, where this print shows the jumper wire and the power cord. And if we look at the back, we can see that uh, we can see that if we put one lead in here and one lead in here, we've got this current or this flowing over to here where our jumper is to the input of the transformer and the other one going right there. So that's what we're going to do. So when you see a conflicting picture and a drawing, just for my rule of thumb, the drawing, mechanical drawing, is usually more accurate than a picture. Cut the power supply indent. Labels from instruction seat, glue, or tape to the board. Where are our labels? There aren't any labels. Okay. Now, as I said, now that we've got this all put together, I'm going to get another screwdriver and my little piece of wood. And mount this. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to protect me from trying to pick this thing up when it's plugged in and shocking the heck out of myself. Now, let me clean up the workbench a little bit, then I'll fire this thing up. And I forgot something. I forgot to put the two, I mean, the posts in here, which I should have done before I put the thing on the board, on the piece of wood, but it doesn't matter. A couple of pair of tweezers, and we'll figure it out. Let me back the camera off a little bit more. And as you can see on my left here, I've got a Variac, a variable AC unit, because I don't want to plug this directly into mains. I'm going to bring it up slowly just in case anything happens. And I'm, going to, I'm walking across the shop to get my safety goggles. So we'll plug it into the Variac, turn the Variac on, and bring the meter into range. Now I'm going to bring it up slowly. That's 20 volts, 30, 40, 60. The LED is starting to light up, which is good. I just heard some clicking. We'll take it up to 120, and now I'm going to check the DC output. It's 9.55 volts there. That's, and this one is 9.5. Okay, that's higher than I thought it would be. Gonna dial this one down, way all the way down. And we've got 1.7 volts. 
So we've got a range of 1.7 volts up to, let's see what the max on this is, up to 16 volts. So there you go. It's a nice little power supply. And I can take my face shield off because it's not going to blow up on me. Uh, nice little power supply. I mean, obviously it's a very old design. I'm not sure where you might use this, but... I can see potentially using this for a uh, landscape power or something like that if you put it in a nice box and keep it isolated. So it certainly could work and it was, as you saw, uh, old design, some issues with the board, some uh, differences in the print from what it actually should be, but it's okay. You can figure all that stuff out and you got this video to look at. And I hope, oh, one more thing I'm going to see if this is, it's not under load, so these are probably not going to get hot. No. Uh, and that's it. And I hope you enjoyed the video.